Give us the secret sauce. <laughs> don't don't gatekeep on us on us right now. You know, okay, like tell right. us what it is. What is it? What's up, everybody? My name is Adam, and I'm the host of the You Know Adam Same podcast, the show that is dedicated on bringing on passionate people, learning about their stories, and delivering value to entrepreneurs. So if that's what you're interested in, go ahead and follow, like, and subscribe. You know what I'm saying? How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the You Know Adam Saying Podcast, where you get to know just a little bit more about people, passions, and all things business. Today, sitting virtually across the way, I have D. Daniels of D. Daniels Media. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Adam. This is exciting. I'm very excited to be a part of this podcast. You're doing great things. I've listened to a lot of it, and, uh, and you're really getting yourself out there and helping a lot of people. Thank you so much. So I have to, you know, give a shout out to my friend, uh, Jason Smith. He was the one that actually put me on. He said that, hey, you know, I've met someone. She's absolutely phenomenal. I think that you guys would get along. And that's when I started kind of like, you know, going through the LinkedIn, uh, connecting with you. So uh, th- uh, big shout outs to Jason. Yeah, absolutely. I love Jason. He's fantastic. He's also doing great things uh, with the Blood Connection and so many wonderful people in the community. So love that. Love love a good networking situation. Absolutely. So uh, D. Daniels, tell me a little bit about kind of, uh, I, I, I've been studying a little bit about, you know, your history, uh, doing a lot of uh, voice. Um, what do they call this? Voice... So uh, professional, I do lot, yeah, voiceover, voice professional. You could pretty much call it anything. But also, uh, you know, I, I started in radio, so I did 26 years in radio before I transitioned to owning my own media company. Um, and so, yeah, I had a I had a long path in local radio stations, just about every station you could think of, every format you could think of, um, AM, FM, all the things, sports, all the formats. I mean just to kind of know how to climb the ladder and then create my own thing. Absolutely. And, you know, the thing here is like, I I think it's a shame because, you know, uh, in radio, they don't get the opportunity to see how amazing of a haircut that you have. That is (laughs) awesome. When did you start rocking that? Oh, it's so clean. It's so clean. It is pretty clean. (laughs) Tell, Tell me about when you, when, when did you start rocking the Mohawk? Mm, that that's part of my brand now you know it's funny because uh you know after a while i, I came in early uh came into radio pretty early so um i came into the time when we were not everywhere our face wasn't everywhere you know our voice was everywhere but we didn't have you know we didn't do lives on facebook we didn't do all that sort of thing um we weren't on billboards really and that you know kind of thing either but eventually it went there where they were starting to promote you a little more and um one day one of my general managers asked if i wanted my face on the uh radio station van and i was like absolutely not and he was (laughs) like no we got to do it we got to do it you're the morning show girl we got to do it i was like uh okay so it was then that I started like thinking more about like my look as well as my voice. You know, I was really crafting my my delivery as far as my voice goes, but I would never really crafted my look because I was like, mm, I don't have to. Nobody can see me. Uh, but I started doing that and it, it eventually start, I just got shorter and shorter on the sides and went to the Mohawk. And now that's kind of part of my brand and people recognize it, which I love. That's super cool. Um, You know, so I'm actually super interested in having this discussion with you because I think, you know, um, I I guess initially when you got into radio, that was the main form of advertising, marketing. Uh, There was a huge amount of public relations in there, you know, and, and things have changed since then. And, you know, I'm excited to hear about kind of like your journey of how you entered the space. Uh, So let's start with that. How did you know you wanted to do radio? So I kind of just fell into radio, which was was fun. I mean, it was, you know, I was, gosh, I was 19, 20, and my mom was like, get a summer job. Would you uh, do something? And I was like, yes, I should. Um, And so I started at this radio station. It was a little AM uh, radio station. You could basically hear it in the Walmart parking lot nearby. But um, it, it was great, and it was a great place for me to get my just my journey started and um, I, I didn't really know how much I was going to like it. And then I, I got to doing like a, I started at the bottom of the ladder. I did a Sunday afternoon 
shift where I was basically running the soundboard for a baseball game. I mean, so I started there and, you know, I learned everything. I was just a sponge. I learned everything I could. And I was like, you know, I want to learn how to run the soundboard. I want to learn how to talk to these sports guys. I want to learn how to do the commercials in between. I want to learn how to do the advertising where people sponsor what we're doing. And so I, I sort of just like soaked it all in. And it was interesting, like how much it, it just grabs you once you start like doing that and learning all of the tools behind it, it really just grabbed me. And I was like, you know, I feel like over years I, I knew I needed to climb the ladder. So I did. I mean, I climbed from that Saturday or Sunday afternoon shift all the way up to doing a morning show in the top 20 in DC. So, I wow. mean, you know, it was, it was a long journey. It was a long 26 years, but I learned everything I could every step of the way. And I knew once I was done with that, I knew there was going to be a, a, a day, a moment where I was going to say, okay, I'm going to open the next door. And the next door for me was no longer using my voice to elevate someone else's business. It was actually to start using my voice, my platform and my skills to elevate my business. And, mm. and, you know, what I did in that time frame was I worked with so many small businesses, so many entrepreneurs, so many nonprofits. I worked with all of those and I had them on my shows. And so I would interview them because they were very interesting. So, you know, I'd have them on my Sunday morning talk show. I'd have them on my one of my podcasts that I had through the radio station that I was working for. And I loved meeting these people and I loved getting to know them and their journey. What I realized was they had a pain point that I could help with. And mm. so that was the the real piece for me that was like, oh, I see now what my next step can be and how I can help people. The pain point that they had was it's really difficult if you're running your own business, if you're creating your own brand to market yourself on a platform like a radio station or a television station, because sometimes that kind of marketing can be really expensive if you are trying to do it long term. So, you know, you have to do it long term if you're if you're doing that kind of platform, you have to buy advertising that shows up two or three times a day in the hot times of the day, like the morning show, like the midday show, like the afternoon drive show. Um, so you have to do it for a long time and spend a good amount of money. And a lot of these entrepreneurs and, and small business owners and nonprofits, they, they just did not have that kind of budget to be able to do that. So I knew that I needed to create something in my next step beyond radio that was helping them shine a light on their brand and their business so that they could actually have people know what they're doing. And so the way I did that was say, well, gosh, I know how to do a podcast and I know how to edit and I know how to do all the tools and I know how to run the soundboard and I know how to get the equipment and all of that. I can help you create the platform and help you deliver this message in a way that also uses the psychology behind how people listen because 26 years later and 14 radio stations and two TV stations and 20 podcasts later, I got a little bit of that psychology in me and I know how people listen and what makes them jump. And, and so now I teach that to entrepreneurs and business owners and nonprofits and I give them that platform and help them develop their own podcasts. I love this story. Uh, it, everything comes full circle. Uh, the fact that you know you you work through the this industry, kind of delivering value, and you saw this need and you turned it into a business yourself. That is absolutely amazing. Um, one of the questions I have in here is like you know before we get to kind of like the the minutia of like you know the different you know tips and tricks. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about kind of the evolution of radio during the period of time you know that you were there and also perhaps like you know is radio still effective for people that are advertising 
That's a great question. And I love talking about that evolution. Um, I, I'm, this is why I have the Mohawk. So I don't date myself, but telling the story, I'm going to date myself, Adam. That's just how it's going to go. Um, when I came into radio, we were still playing records. Yes, that is the truth. Um, I, I know. And, and so like I actually got to understand the, uh, you know, the kind of funny jokes that we have now about like spinning the records. I actually spun the records for like a minute. Um, that's so awesome. I came in on that, the tail end of that when we were, um, actually going from records to CDs. And then of course we went CDs to all, uh, all electronic and all digital. So it was an interesting evolution. And, and I always tell people that, um, there were two big, moments in radio from that point to this point there were two two big moments one of those moments was when satellite radio came along um so i was always working for a local a locally owned station and i loved that i loved working with that because i had i had a little more creative control on my shows and on my content and that sort of thing um, I did work for a couple of the big box radio. I, I did work for iHeart for a minute and all of that. And they were very cool. Uh, but you could tell the difference very much between a locally owned and a, you know, kind of a big box because they have a little more control over everything and they want everything to be in a certain way because they know it works. So it was, it was interesting kind of watching that process when satellite came along, everybody in local radio completely panicked. We were all having just these heart palpitations about like, this is it. We're going to be done. Like who's going to want to listen to local radio when you've got a satellite situation where people can actually go buy a subscription. They don't have to listen to commercials. They don't have to listen to any of the other stuff that we have to do as a radio station who is a business, who is selling advertising. And so we've got in an hour on a local radio station, you've got 12 minutes worth of commercials, um, mm -hmm. you know, if not a little more. So it, we didn't know what to do and how we were going to survive that wave that came along. What was interesting was we rode the panic wave and everything was fine because what ended up happening was everybody sort of checked out this brand new thing, commercial free. You can hear this. You can hear Britney Spears and anybody you want everywhere, right? You can listen to the same song and, and go across state lines and still hear the same station. Awesome. And it was, and it is. And, you know, a lot of people jump ship from local radio, including big names like Howard Stern. So, mm -hmm. you know, you think about like the success of it, it is phenomenal. But what ended up happening was there was a massive amount of people that missed the local element. And mm. so there were people that were like, I actually liked hearing about local news. I liked hearing about the local traffic report. I like hearing about the weather that day and how it's going to be this weekend. I love hearing that. And so they missed that. And so they left that subscription base and came back to local radio or they did both, uh, which is great because local radio is free. But, you know, the thing is, is that we didn't lose any of our listeners. We took a hit for a minute. But then it was like people were like, actually, I miss that local afternoon person who I kind of got to know. And I know that I can see him at an event at the local car dealership, <laughs> which is really cool. How long of a period of time did that last for? That's kind of like unsettling period. Because I knew, I remember when kind of like, you know, it, it, everything started happening. And, you know, I listened to a little bit of it, but uh, I, I never, I wasn't, I, I, I'm curious as to how long of a period that you guys were like on the edge for. Yeah, it was, it was a good year. Um, you know, it really, it was obviously the brand new shiny Barbie doll that came out at the store and everybody wanted it and it was Christmas, you know, and people were just like, ah, this is everything. And, and it, and it was, and it was great and it was cool. Uh, but we did have a good year of panic and it was a good year where like, I think it gave people an opportunity to have those like three month subscriptions, six month subscriptions. And then we started getting numbers, you know, in, in radio, you always get, you know, now you can get numbers every month, every week if you want. But we generally used to, back in the day, uh, get numbers that were, mar uh, I'm sorry, spring numbers and, and fall numbers. So, you know, it was sort of like television ratings. It was, you, you would get numbers on the, on the two big ends. But 
now you can get numbers all the time. So when that happened, we were starting to finally get some really clear numbers of how it affected the ratings by the time like fall hit that year. And so we were like, oh man, we saw the dip and it was a significant dip, but then we saw the start of the climb back up. And when we climbed back up, we never lost after that. Mm. Like radio just continued to be like fantastic in that, in that, in that regard. And then, so that was a big hit. And then the second big wave was when podcasting became really super popular. Mm. And so now, you know, Joe Blow across the street can start his own show. And Mm -hmm. so all of these local radio stations were like, man, what if they like Joe's show more than us? (laughs) Cause again, they can listen to Joe's show on their phone or on their, you know, so how do we in local radio, the question was, how do we compete with that? Um, when now everybody can have their own show and everybody's a DJ or everybody's a talent. Um, and everybody's got something to say. Did the radio stations actually see a dip there? Because you were saying that, you know, for, from, you know, XM, they kind of like felt like the, they felt the gap, right? Yeah. But for podcasts, did you guys also see that as well? It was a slower wave. Um, it was definitely a slower wave because podcasting didn't like just take off like that. It just started to seep in and we started to hear about other people's podcasts and we started to hear about like what they were doing and the topics they were talking about and and it was just like, man, these are good. This is good. And people are getting popular on their podcast. And so the question became not how do we compete with it, but how do we jump in the, in the pool of it? That was the, that mm-hmm. became the question. So that was what we were talking about in our weekly meetings. We were like, okay, what do we do to actually bring the podcast crowd into the radio crowd? How do we merge those two? And what we came up with was, well, duh, we all should just start our own podcast. (laughs) Hello. Understood. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it was a little difficult and sweaty on the talent end, I have to tell you, because I was already doing a five hour live, no delay morning show. Um, Okay. So that means, you know, I'm doing a five hour live show every day. And I'm also doing a Sunday morning talk show. That's a half an hour talk. Why didn't they uh, just take the content that was cr- being created on those morning shows, cut it up, kind of like put it together, and then send out a- out as the podcast? That would, would that would be what makes sense to me. Great question, and a lot of people did, and that actually worked for a lot, a lot of shows where they would cut segments up. The the a lot of the stations that I worked for, like I said, were locally owned, so we had a very small staff. So it was a rarity that for my five hour morning show, I had a producer. I generally okay. had an intern who maybe wanted to be there 20% of the time. <laughs> so it was a little difficult. But what we ended up doing was not only doing that, where we would cut up portions of shows and put that out on a podcast. And that did very, very well. But what we also ended up doing was taking our talent. So the morning show person, myself, uh, the midday person, the afternoon person, the night person, we ended up finding out that people loved those personalities so much that they really wanted to know more about them. So we did podcasts for everybody's separate talent. Like we did, I did a podcast, ended up doing two, uh, you know, as well as my Sunday morning show and my morning show. So it was a lot of work on the talent end, but it, what it did for your personal brand was it, mm. it may, I mean, it was phenomenal. Like I got to actually just speak about the things that meant so much to me in my podcast and the radio station would promote my podcast. I mean, mm. it, it was great. So not only was I doing a, a really great high rated morning show and a Sunday morning talk show, but then I did two podcasts that were just like exactly things I wanted to talk about. I did one, one of my first, um, podcast that I did under the radio station umbrella was all about the LGBTQ plus community in Northern Virginia. And it is phenomenal how many people were very thirsty for that kind of content. 
Mm. And so like, I was thrilled to do that. And, and I didn't get to talk about that very much on my show because I'm talking in between, you know, Britney Spears and Pink and <laughs> all, you know, Understood. All the, yeah. Understood. So I didn't really get to have that long form conversation. So I loved it. And all it did was increase my brand. Yeah, that's great. Um, you know, so at, in this current state, uh, you know, one of the other questions I had was, is it still effective to advertise on radio, right? Like you have yeah. now moving towards podcasts, you know, content on social media has, you know, taken hold. At this point in time, you know, as a business owner or as an entrepreneur, do you still invest your time and efforts into radio? So that's a great question. And I'm going to ask all of my old radio friends to tune me out while I answer it. Um, <laughs> I like this. I, I, I'm telling you right now, I, I, I'm, I'm I, at this point in my career, I'm super honest about that question. And I, I get that question a lot. I do think there is a place for radio advertising and for television advertising. Absolutely. I think there's a place for it, but I think, that it's not as effective as it used to be because mm. it used to be the only avenue in town. So yep. now that we have all of these other avenues, it's really about taking your marketing piece and going backwards with it, right? So looking at it from like, okay, what do I want to accomplish with the marketing piece that I want to do? So let's say I want to promote a podcast. Let's say I want to promote uh, just my business in general. Or let's say I want to promote an event, right? So you've got three different things there. There's a different avenue for each one of those things. And mm -hmm. radio advertising and television advertising and print advertising even, it's not necessarily the avenue for all of those things. And it used to be, you know, it's like, great, if you can get, you know, commercial campaign on, on a radio station, that's fantastic. And it's great for car dealerships. I'll tell you that. They do it all the time. <laughs> um, you know, I mean... That's how radio stations survive is the good majority of their uh, their revenue is coming in from car dealership. And it's great for that because most of the time when you're listening to local radio, where are you? Mm. In your car. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. So, I mean, they've Makes got sense. a captive audience about their product. So that's why it's great for that. And it's great for events. Like if you're going to be doing some uh, big like chili cook off in, you know, wherever and you want to draw a crowd, it's great for stuff like that. If you're holding a concert, it's great for stuff like that. But if you are trying to talk about your brand, if you're an entrepreneur and a creative and you're actually trying to talk about like what your talent is that you're putting out into the world, what you're creating, it's going to take more than 30 seconds. It's going to mm. take more than a minute. So I find that because of that, it's not really the avenue for people that are trying to have a little bit longer of a conversation with their target audience, target customer, target client. And so, you know, with this experience, obviously you have worked with a ton of, you know, entrepreneurs, businesses, organizations, and you know how to connect those people with the audience that they're looking for. And so at, in this current stage, where do you think that people need to be spending their time in order to effectively build an audience, build a community? How do they do that? Yeah, great question. As you know, Adam, I'm a big fan of podcasts. So <laughs> yep. <laughs> I would say absolutely. Spend, some, spend some time and money there. Uh, absolutely. Because, you know, that's one of the things that I found, especially um, with small businesses and nonprofits and, and, and people that were, again, creatives. Uh, I found that they wanted to have a longer form conversation. They wanted to be able to explain to their target audience like where their passion comes from. Because as a business owner or a nonprofit or creative, if you can see my passion, you're probably going to remember me, right? So right. it's like, you know, that's that's why we created this, this media company to do podcast development for all of these wonderful creatives and business owners and nonprofits because it was like, I know you need to have more of a conversation than 30 seconds or a minute. I know you need to have something that lives longer than a print ad in a magazine. Because once people look at that magazine, it's probably going in the recycle bin. Um, so, you know, what we do is help them build a podcast where they can have 20, 30, 40, 50 episodes, two seasons, four seasons, 10 seasons, however much they want to have, and have all of these conversations. Like, 
in every episode, you can share a piece of yourself that talks mm -hmm. about your passion, why you got into the business that you're in, why you're representing this nonprofit. I remember when I was, um, I was about, I don't know, uh, three or four years into my last morning show, I started doing uh, radiothons for the Children's Hospital in DC. And so every year for two days, I'd be on the air for the whole two days raising money for the Children's Hospital. And it's a great hospital. It's, it's, a, it's under the umbrella of Children's Miracle Network. So mm -hmm. it's really, really great hospital, does great things. And they help kids and families that don't have insurance and they help, you know, pay for these phenomenal research programs that they have to help cure diseases and they're just doing great things. So I was all behind it. And I did that for eight years. And I learned during that process, the psychology behind how to get people to actually listen to your content and make a move because of it. Mm. So, you know, I, what I learned during that eight years, because it was funny, I got to, when I was on the, on the air for two days, raising money, I was doing this uh, mix of music and storytelling and interviewing and call to action. So I was doing a mix of all of that. And it was, it was beautiful. Like after eight years of doing it, I just, I still think it was probably the most significant thing I've ever done in my career. And what I got to do was watch the phone lines and I got to watch the donations that would come in via text, via uh, online. And, and people would donate you know, all throughout those two days. And we would just raise a crap ton of money and it was phenomenal. Um, but what I got to do was watch how, how, what I said and the way I delivered it, how it affected the phone calls, how it affected the donations. There was a certain way that I could say things in a certain way that I could package a story and deliver it in a certain way, a certain way I could interview someone where the phone lines would light up. And I mean, donation after donation after donation. And then I would do to try something different. I do this or do that. And the phone lines would go quiet. And I'm like, oh man, this is interesting. So after eight years, I learned what to say and what not to say and how to package stories and how to deliver emotion behind what I was saying in a way that got people involved to actually move them to action. So the, to answer your question, that's what we tell people to spend time on. Spend time on like figuring out what it is you're so crazy passionate about because that's behind what you're doing as a creative, as a small business. Like there is something behind the mom and pop that owns a, you know, a, a honey store where they've got local honey and this, that, and the other. There's something, there's a story behind that. If you can pull that story up, and put that out on your LinkedIn, on your Instagram, on your Facebook, do a podcast, talk about it. You're going to be golden. Like spend your time there getting your story up and out to the audience you want to get it to. I, I have to ask. I mean, you, you're going on about this formula. What's the formula? Give us the secret <laughs> sauce. Don't, don't gatekeep on us on us right okay. now. You know, like All tell right. us what it is. What is it? I'm sorry, Adam, you're cutting out. I can't hear. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's funny that you asked that because I just actually uh, dropped the formula this morning on my Instagram um, and I'm okay. planning to drop it later on LinkedIn. So uh, it's great that you're asking that. The formula goes like this. It's really simple. It's three E's. One, two, three. Um, the first one is people want to be entertained with your content. The second one is people want to be educated by whatever it is that you're delivering. And the third one is people want to feel emotion. Ooh. So yeah, those are the three E's. And I'm telling you, I learned after a while, if I could package every piece of content with one of those three E's, at least I was going to get some movement in what I wanted to do. So if you're a, a business owner and an entrepreneur and you're putting some wonderful things out into the world, Think about how you can use that formula the next time you're putting content out. So if people want to be entertained, they want to be educated and they want to feel some sort of emotion. Think about like, how can I be entertaining with the product that I have? Right. Mm. So can I show a fun picture? Can I show a fun video? Can I show, uh, you know, we, we've got a, a wonderful client that is a uh, professional dog walker here in, uh, in, in Savannah. And so we love that. It's fantastic. Snappy paws. They're doing a great job. They came out of Chicago. They've got a big one in Chicago and they're doing it here now. 
But, you know, we talk about like things with them of like, you know, bringing the story out. You know, let's see some video of, of dog walking. Let's see some video. Let's hear the story about how, as a professional dog walker, you actually go in and do senior care visits for dogs, right? Uh, which is phenomenal. I mean, so let's hear about that story where you went in and there was a dog and, and a little older dog and they're not doing great all the time, but they see you every week and they get so excited and they lift their spirits. That's the kind of stuff people want to hear about in your content on your social media. I mean, if you can pull that out and then, so that's maybe the entertaining piece. You know, you give that, that little video, then there's an education piece. Let me tell you how important it is to educate. So let me educate you in one tip, you know, give somebody one tip of whatever it is that your business is and then make them feel emotion. Well, if you're doing the dog business, you already made them feel emotion because you're helping a senior dog. So there's that. Um, <laughs> Another client that we're this close to kicking off a podcast works I'm so excited about is uh, is Oasis Senior Advisors and our friend Chris Rowitz, who is a wonderful, wonderful senior care advisor. So he's like this hub for fantastic people to call him and he can help navigate through these conversations of what's going on with my mom if I think she's got dementia or Alzheimer's or maybe I've got an elderly parent that needs to go into some sort of assisted living. I don't know how to have these conversations. He's the guy and it's a free service and you can just call him and like he'll direct you through the whole process, whether it's hospice care or whatever. So we're getting ready to kick off a podcast for him and we're talking about those three Love E's. That. You know, we're Love talking about that. how do we educate, entertain and make them feel emotion. And if you can wrap that formula into your content, I promise you will not, not regret it because people, you will move people in a way that they will not forget your brand. Wow. So, I mean, this is invaluable. If you're listening right now as an entrepreneur, this that's probably like the, one of the biggest tips, right? And, and, and I actually would say that it, regardless of if it's podcasting or anything that you do, even the services that you provide, social media, that those three E's actually exist. So that is absolutely some phenomenal advice. So, you know, how does one kind of like start then, right? Like, you know, I want to deliver, you know, the three E's to my, my uh, people, my audience. What's the best way to get started? Obviously, uh, perhaps by contacting D Daniels at what's the website? D Daniels media.com. You got it. That's it. Okay. Okay. Uh, but if they, you know, wanted to start like a podcast or maybe, you know, you're so busy uh, that you can't take them. What is the best way? What's the recommended way that you would get them started? Yeah. So I, I think that's really uh, important to know, you know, yeah, if you, if you're thinking about doing a podcast, you know, obviously we're happy to help you walk through that process. You know, maybe you're not there yet to where you want to do like a full on podcast or that seems a little scary. Um, I think, you know, when, when people are looking at like how they deliver their message on social media, right? Because that's where we all are most of the time delivering our message on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, whatever it may be. You know, you, you apply those three E's to that content too. But I got to tell you, before you start putting out that content, where you should start is you should actually look at your calendar and look at your content and say, okay, I, I want to make several kinds of content. Obviously, you want content that's going to like move people, but you also want content that's evergreen, right? So content that's going to like, you can put it out anytime. There's no date to it. You, you know, it doesn't matter. You want to you bank some of that evergreen content. So that you can always have that right and so it's like you know it's been two three days since i've posted i really need to post something but I, my brain i am not feeling creative at all this is awful boom you've got this evergreen content that you can post anytime that that mm -hmm. post i was talking to you about that i did today on instagram with the three e's that's an evergreen piece of content mm -hmm. and it's something super valuable for the people that are watching and, and reading that and they and they can take that and use that anytime. So I can put that out two months from now and it's still going to have the same effect that it had when I put it out this morning. So, yeah, get that evergreen content. And I think the other thing is like start banking a list of stories. I am a huge storyteller. I think all information, all your education pieces that you want to put out in content about your product or your business or, or whatever you're doing, you need to wrap it in a story because that is what gets people excited. So if you can find something, wrap it in a story, that's going to be great. So a good way to do that is start banking some of your stories. So, mm -hmm. you know, just when you're sitting around, like 
I came up with this story the other day and I haven't put it out yet, so I won't tell the whole story. But okay. um, it's all about developing your audience. And this is one thing that I like to coach people on, whether that's on their social media or on a podcast. How do we grow the audience, right? So I was thinking about what story can I wrap around that? And the story that I came up with was this. I remember the very first time I grew an audience. And the very first time I did that, I was about nine years old. So my grandfather at, at the time was a minister. And we came home from church on a Sunday. Come home from church. And I was just, I loved the fact, I loved watching him preach. I loved how he did the whole service. I loved the whole thing. It was very cool. I come home. I go in the backyard. It's Sunday afternoon. Weather's great. I jump up on the the sliding the the slide, you know, at the top there, and I just I, I don't know. I was so motivated, so I was just like, I loved this church service today. It was great, and so I started reenacting the church service, standing awesome. on top of the slide. Awesome. And I didn't realize until about 20 minutes in that the neighbors behind us had gathered and they're all just like wide eyed. And I finished like, you know, reenacting the sermon and they're like clapping and they're like, yes. And I'm like, daggone, that was the first time I had an audience like outside that's of my amazing. family. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, that's the kind of story I'm talking about. Find a story like that wrap it in your content of like how to grow an audience. So I'm going to use that story. And I'm going to, I'm going to share that with people and you'll never forget that. That'll be something you'll remember and you'll be able to picture and you'll tie it to the con, the education piece and the content, like growing your audience. So how, okay. So I have to ask then how much of a connection is there, right? You loved watching kind of like the emotion that was done in these churches. And obviously it, it motivated you to reenact that. Did that ha ultimately have an impact on the things that you're doing now? Oh, I'm sure of it. Um, I, I absolutely believe it. My my grandfather was a minister, and then later on in life, my dad became a minister. So I was always in the leadership uh, in church, and 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 now I I have my own spiritual path. But I I translated all of that into it. It made me not afraid to speak in front of people. And I love that. Like it gave me some real fire in my, in my soul to, to, to want to say what I, what I feel and what I think. And, and I love that. And so I have, I have taken that and I have made a, a career out of it my whole life. I mean, you know, there was a time when I was, I was very nervous to talk in front of a crowd, but I was on the radio. And it was great because nobody could see me. And so it was just me in a room by myself in front of a microphone. And I'm like, I can do this. This is cool. Um, and I still prefer that, let me tell you. But <laughs> I've gotten a lot better at it. And and so over the years, just doing it and doing it and doing it and realizing that I have something to say. Like, mm. I have stuff that I know. I'm an expert at this stuff now. And that's one thing that I always encourage, like, other entrepreneurs to do like I guarantee you if you have become an entrepreneur and you are really pouring yourself into what you're doing you're an expert at it so don't shy away from that like the first opportunity that you have to get up and speak whether that's at like a chamber event a networking event or just hit the record button on your phone and then put it out on social media, say the things because I guarantee you people will be moved and touched by it. And yeah, mm. so I think that that background totally gave me the courage to find my own voice. And now I'm helping people find theirs. That's absolutely amazing. Uh, D. Daniels, what is kind of coming up on the horizon? What's next? I, I, we heard a little tidbits of here and there of like some potential things that you're working on. Uh, what does the future look like? Oh, I'm so excited about the future. I, I love where we are. I love where we're going. Um, we have just, uh, I, we're about 20 podcast in at this point. Wow. And um, I love, loved every one of them. Um, and, and we just uh, had two new clients in the last couple of days, the Savannah Irish festival, and then my friend Chris with the, uh, Oasis senior advisors that I was talking about. And so we're getting ready to launch those podcasts. We have an extremely successful podcast through, um, Corcoran Austin Hill Realty, and that's called made of Savannah. And that has gone off the charts in my expectations, um, which I'm thrilled about. Uh, and, and, uh, I would say out of the 20 that we've done, 
for other businesses and nonprofits and entrepreneurs that I host them about 90% of the time myself because I offer myself as a host because a lot of people are a, they might not have time to do that sort of thing, interview people and spend, there's a lot of time in, to going and doing a podcast, but B, they also might be a little nervous to try to run the show. I mean, you know, that, that can be a little nerve wracking to do. And so it's kind of old hat for me and I, I, I love doing it. So if I can make it easier for them, I can be their representative. So I always offer myself as a host if they want that. And then of course I write all their in-house commercials for them and all that sort of thing that, that they want as well. But that's what we're doing. Like we're building these podcasts and I'm super excited about that, but we're also an entrepreneur family. So my partner, Megan, she's not only uh, the, the co-owner of my uh, D Daniels media business, but she's about to launch her own business, which I'm super, super excited about. It's called the road to wellness. And she is doing some fantastic things with uh, functional nutrition, and as well as like helping people through their health journey. Um, so she's, she's getting ready to launch that and, and we're just thrilled about that. So yeah, good stuff. That's amazing. I'm, I'm going to have to bring her on to the show. Sounds like she's an entrepreneur oh, as yeah. well. Yeah, you'll love her. So absolutely. Well, I have to thank you so much for coming on to the You Know Adam Same podcast. Thank you so much for dropping these nuggets of wisdom, right? Like, you know, with the experience that you have, I love the fact that, you know, you, you got the opportunity to, you know, see the impact of your words like on the phone lines, right? Like that was, I got chills when you were talking about that. That's absolutely amazing. And you've honed that over time. So there's so much value that you're delivering. I'm so happy that you're, you know, continuing this spirit of entrepreneurship, helping other businesses do the same thing. And uh, just really a great pleasure to meet you. Same, Adam. You're doing some great things too. I love the podcast. Uh, obviously, you are all about elevating people and helping other people help themselves and network all of that. And it's just phenomenal. And you do a great job. You have a great podcast. You have a great podcast voice. You deliver it well. Uh, you've got a great look yourself, my friend. So keep on with your brand because it's, it's amazing. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Yes, Adam. Thank you.